What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for coming on this video and welcome to my channel here. And obviously, if you've looked at the title of this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my Stanley Cup playoff predictions for these NHL 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs. Just for some opening thoughts here, just looking at this bracket, these 16 teams, unbelievable seasons they've all had. I think we have, what, 12, 13, 100 point teams in the league this year. Unbelievable what we've witnessed this season from all these elite teams in the NHL. So to start off this video, I'm just gonna preview every single first round series and give you a little bit of in-depth analysis of what I feel the matchups are gonna look like, how these teams you know, compare head to head, and ultimately who's gonna take each of those series. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you the remainder of my bracket and how I see the rest of the playoffs unfolding and eventually getting to who I believe will hoist the Stanley Cup this season. And keep in mind that these are all amazing teams that are playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I really think anything can happen from the best team in your respective conference to one of the lower seeds, one of the wild cards. It's looking like it's gonna be a absolute bloodbath, especially this season. With that said, if there are anything that you guys disagree with in terms of my picks, do not like give me shit for it. Just, you know, respectfully give your picks in the comments section for those who, you know, come across this video. Just a disclaimer here, I'm actually a Montreal Canadiens fan, so my team didn't even come close to making the playoffs. So with that said, I'm going to try to be as objective and unbiased as possible. So kicking things off in the Western Conference, the first series I have here is the Colorado Avalanche who end up winning the Central Division and the Western Conference up against the second wild card, Nashville Predators. And keep in mind, I have all these stats put up for every single first round series preview, but like I don't read that much into these uh, regular season statistics, but it's just here for visuals. But anyway, looking at these two teams, there is a massive discrepancy in where they finish in the standings. Obviously, 119 points for the Colorado Avalanche and 97 for the Nashville Predators, which I believe is the least of any playoff team, but still close to 100 points for almost every team in the playoffs. Again, very insane. So before we get into the weaknesses of certain teams and questions I have, the one thing that I'm pretty certain we're going to be getting in this series is a ton of offense. Just looking at both of these teams, Nashville side, Roman Yossi, Matt Duchesne, Philip Forsberg leading the charge, having career years for Nashville. And of course, Colorado have been an elite offensive team for the last few years now. Miko Ranson, Nathan McKinnon, Nazem Kadri having an unbelievable season. I certainly did not see this coming from him. But yeah, like I said, goals are not going to be an issue for either of these teams. We both know that these guys are you know offensive driving teams i mean yes they can defend not too bad but obviously the meat and potatoes of this team is through their offensive game so for me this series ultimately comes down to goaltending and with colorado darcy campers had a very very solid season and i have no question that he's going to be very good in this series and probably should be a main reason why the, the avalanche go far in the playoffs if they end up doing so looking at the nashville side of things I mean, their goals against is only ranked 17th in the league, but that's in part because aside from UC Soros, they haven't really been getting any reliable goaltending in the backup roles. You know, David Riddick has been very bad this season and Connor Ingram has been no better. So UC Soros, really, they had to ride the wave with him for the majority of the season. He played 67 games, but he put up some very solid stats and is a big reason why the Predators even made the playoffs. We have these question marks if he's even good to go to start the playoffs. We know he missed the last couple of games with an injury. And if he's not good to go, that is a massive, massive loss for the Nashville Predators. And that could be very costly in this first round series. But overall, I see more similarities than differences in these two teams. So I think this is going to be a very good matchup. So let me get into my official prediction here. So I think like most people, I'm going to pick the Colorado Avalanche to win this series and advance to the second round. However, I do think the Nashville Predators have the talent to push this into a pretty competitive series. I have the Avalanche winning in six games. And I know that most people are probably not giving the Predators any sort of chance in this series, especially if UC Soros is not going to be playing. But I'm actually going to assume that he is healthy. And obviously, if he's not healthy, I, I honestly don't think they have a chance with David Riddick or Connor Ingram. I just don't think they have the goaltending. I think it doesn't go beyond five games. I think they could even get swept, to be honest with you. But obviously, UC Soros, if he's healthy, he is a very, very good goaltender. And he's going to help the Predators massively in this series. And he can definitely help them push to maybe upsetting the Avalanche. But ultimately, I do think the Avalanche are just a much deeper team 
up front and especially on the blue line. And even combining with the fact that Darcy Kemper is a great goaltender who's stolen series in the past, going back to the 2020 bubble when he was with the Arizona Coyotes, the Nashville Predators know exactly what Darcy Kemper is capable of doing in a playoff series. Now moving on to the next series in which I think is going to be the best and most competitive series in the first round. We got the second seed Minnesota Wild against the third seed St. Louis Blues in that central division. Looking at both of these teams, you can see that they mirror each other quite well. I mean, offensively, both these teams are absolutely loaded. In Minnesota's case, you got Kirill Kaprizov, who had over 100 points in just the second season in the NHL. Just a special, special dynamic talent that we have in the National Hockey League. Then we have Kevin Fiala, who had a career year, 85 points, really stepped up for Minnesota. One of my favorite players, to be honest with you. I really like his game. And of course, Matt Zuccarello, who also had a career year. And he's in his mid-30s, but 79 points for him. Just unbelievable seasons for pretty much everyone in Minnesota. And then the St. Louis Blues may be the deepest top nine in the NHL. When you consider the fact that every single one of those top nine players had at least 20 goals this season, which is insane to think about. Of course, led by that top line of Robert Thomas, Pavel Buchnevich, and Vladimir Tarasenko, who had an amazing comeback season. Honestly, I thought he was dead in the water with all those injuries, but he certainly proved me wrong. Now, when you look at the rest of these stats, it seems like statistically this would favor in the St. Louis Blues' way. Especially when you look at special teams, that is greatly in their favor right there. Second in power play compared to Minnesota, who are ranked 18th. And then the penalty kill, they ranked top five. And the penalty kill for the Minnesota Wild, only 25th. Now, even the goals against favors the Blues. But a lot of that was, you know, Cam Talbot kind of struggling, you know, midseason. And the Wild didn't get really that much help with Kakul Kakanen before they ended up trading him off. But ever since Marc-Andre Fleury entered the organization in that trade with the Blackhawks, both him and Talbot have been splitting starts and have both looked incredible down the stretch here. Which begs the question for me, I don't know who starts game one. I think there is a little bit of a controversy because both of those goalies certainly capable of being the starting goaltender in a Stanley Cup playoff series. Looking at the blue side of things, there's only one option and it's Vili Huzo. It is not Jordan Binnington. I know, you know, he was part of that cup run in 2019, but he has not looked like himself since then. And Vili Huzo really just stole the starters crease this season, and he should definitely be starting. Now, getting into my prediction of this series, this was a very difficult decision. And I feel like for most people, it really varies from person to person who they would take in this series. But I'm actually going to take the Minnesota Wild. But obviously, I think it goes seven games. Like I said before, this is going to be the most competitive series in the first round. And my reasoning for Minnesota taking this series just comes down to how they're structured. I just think Minnesota is a better defensive team. Like I know the Blues have some decent players, you know, Justin Falk, Tory Krug, you know, Colton Perenko on that blue line, but I just think Minnesota is just more responsible defensively than more structured. I like Jared Spurgeon. I think he's the best defenseman in the series. Jonas Brodin is very solid. Matt Dumba I think is a very very solid defenseman as well. I just, I like Minnesota structure a bit better and especially in goal with both Cam Talbot and Marc-Andre Fleury. I think I'm more comfortable with either one of them over Vili Huzo who has no playoff experience. Maybe Vili Huzo can show up in this series, but I'm going with the experience of the Minnesota Wild, especially in goal. Like I said, Marc-Andre Fleury's been there before. He has three Stanley Cups. Cam Talbot, I even trust him as well because he's been a very good starter for several teams. I just, I trust more the Minnesota Wild goaltending and their defense than the Blues. And even though the Blues know how to score goals and they're very deep, the Wild can basically cancel that out with the offense of their own. It's just, just as prolific, honestly. But I will say this, if the Blues end up winning this series, it would not surprise me in the slightest, but I'm going with the Wild here. Moving on to the Pacific Division portion of the bracket, we got the uh, winner of the Pacific Division, the Calgary Flames, taking on the number one wild card the Dallas Stars. And I feel like for this one, I don't need to explain much because to me, this series is very straightforward for me to predict. And although anything can happen, I'm definitely swaying with the Calgary Flames here. Just overall, I just don't know how the Dallas Stars match with the Flames. Flames are the better offensive team, they're the better defensive team. Special teams, they have the advantage. They have the better goaltender in Jacob Markstrom. Although Jake Ottinger, very solid, but obviously... The Flames are just too deep offensively, and I don't know how the Stars are going to match that. 
So with that, I have the Calgary Flames winning this series in five games. The only chance I would give for the Dallas Stars to win this series if, if Jake Ottinger absolutely stands on his head and turns his game up to another level. And if their defense can be their defense, like it's been pretty solid all year. But I just think the Flames can kind of beat the Stars at their own game because as great of a defensive team the Stars can be, the Flames are also a very good defensive team that are very deep on the blue line and have a top five goaltender in the league right now. And then of course you have Daryl Sutter behind the bench who's been there before. He's won two Stanley Cups with the Kings in those defensive systems. I see a lot of similarities with Calgary, but this is maybe an even better team because he has so much more offensive depth than he's ever had with those Kings teams. And I just feel like for Dallas, they have to contain too many guys on this Flames team because you know the top line, everybody on the top line has over 40 goals. You got Mangiapane, who's got 35 playing her second line. Tyler Toffoli, a former King and a playoff performer, went to the finals last year with Montreal, was very key to that run as well. And we just know that he is that guy in those clutch moments. For the Stars, I just don't know where the offense comes from here, especially with how great Calgary is at shutting the door. Amazing performance by that top line. Joe Pavelski turning back the clock. Career season for him. Robertson's going to be an absolute stud in this league. I know that. Rope Hints, of course, solid year for him. That top line did a phenomenal job this season. But really, that top line kind of carried their offense for the majority of the season. And I just think if those guys aren't at their best, I don't see how the Stars can solve the Calgary Flames. Because I have a little bit of respect with how the Stars play, I think they're a very conservative team, very well coached, very well structured. And also, I don't like predicting sweeps, to be honest. Like, these are a lot of really good teams in the Stanley Cup playoffs, so I don't want to predict sweeps. But ultimately, I'm going with the Flames in five. I really don't see the Stars winning this series, to be honest with you. And to wrap up the Western Conference, we got the second seed in the Pacific, the Edmonton Oilers against the third seed in the Pacific, the Los Angeles Kings. Now with the previous matchups we covered, I always thought that those matchups were very similarly constructed teams. But in terms of the Oilers and the Kings, these teams play very different styles of hockey, clearly. We know the Oilers, they're a better offensive team. They got prolific, you know, generational talents, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, of course. And then looking at the Kings side of things, not the greatest offensive team. Actually, they rank like near the bottom third of the league, but it's their defense and their shutdown play, I think, is what they have the advantage over here. I mean, these numbers do not favor the Kings whatsoever in this series. The Oilers were the better team in the head-to-head -head matchup in the regular season. Oilers had the better offense, and the special teams definitely benefits them a ton. But the Kings also rank top 10 in goals against. And in the playoffs, as much as offense is important, I really think that you need good goaltending and good defense to win a Stanley Cup. And I think this could be a recipe for success for the Kings. And we've seen how they played in the past under these type of systems. Now, especially with Mike Smith playing super well down the stretch here, I have a little bit of pause in terms of what I'm predicting here. But to be honest, I'm just going to go with the upset. Yeah, with that, I have the Kings actually taking this series in six games. Um, as much as I like the Oilers and the way they play, there's just something about the Kings. I just have a feeling that the Kings are a lot better than people think and I feel like no one's giving the Kings enough credit by how well they played this season without Drew Doughty for more than half of the year and they've still been able to maintain very solid defensive play they rank top three in shots against so I feel like they're definitely capable of playing that playoff style hockey and uh, winning a playoff series I think is not out of the realm of possibility truthfully I just look at the Kings, and I don't think it's a great matchup for the Oilers, especially in the playoffs, because I think the Kings defend better. And if I had to put my money on it, I would bet on Jonathan Quick outperforming Mike Smith in this series. Again, maybe it's me living in the past, but I just think Jonathan Quick, if he can turn back the clock, man, I just think the Kings are going to be a very difficult team to score on. And although, again, Mike Smith's played well down the stretch, I still don't 100% trust him in the playoffs and you know he's had his inconsistencies all year and he's just injury prone like if he goes down with an injury the Oilers are totally screwed because I don't think Miko Koskinen is the answer for them between the pipes. So maybe I've covered all the obvious here but maybe some of you guys are wondering like how are the Kings going to stop prolific talents like Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and for me I think it starts with two of the guys I highlighted here on the Kings side of things Anze Kopitar is an elite two-way center still in this game, even though he's not, you know, a prolific offensive player. Maybe, you know, maybe he's 
slow down a little bit. I mean, he's no longer a point per game guy, but obviously is still a very good centerman. And of course, Philip Deneau, we've seen what he's done in the past, shutting down top players like Austin Matthews in the playoffs. We know Philip Deneau is among, you know, the better defensive centers in the league. So says Nathan McKinnon. I just think those two defensive centers, two-way centers, they just can't be overlooked, especially in the playoffs. And I can definitely see a scenario with those two guys breathing down the necks of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, that they totally shut those guys down. And, you know, they have little to no room to work with in these postseason. So, yeah, I think the Kings can somehow pull off an upset and win this series. And maybe I'll get a lot of hate for this. And maybe this is an unpopular opinion. But I really think we should not overlook defensive-minded teams. All right, so moving on to the Eastern Conference side of the bracket, we got the President's Trophy winning Florida Panthers taking on the Washington Capitals, who got that second wild card. Straight up, the East is already a clusterfuck. I mean, Washington, the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference, getting 100 points. Like, that's never happened before. Now, looking at the statistics, although I thought it was going to be lopsided, it's really not as lopsided as I thought it was going to be. Now, obviously, the Panthers are just the far and away the superior offensive team, averaging over four goals a game. One of historically one of the best offensive seasons we've ever seen in the National Hockey League. But we know that the Washington Capitals know how to score goals. I mean, they were top 10 in offense. We know Alex Ovechkin, 50 goal scorer at a guy in his early 30s. Just unbelievable season he's having. He's still got it, clearly. Kuznetsov, John Carlson. Just the list goes on. The Caps are a pretty deep offensive team. But looking at the rest of the stats, goals against. Dead even between both of these teams at 2.95. And the special teams, not terribly far off. I know the power play definitely benefits Florida, but really, the offense isn't that big of a discrepancy. And I think even come playoff time, I just don't expect the Panthers to be scoring at that rate. So I definitely think it could be a little bit more of an evenly matched series in that regard. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the Panthers are clearly a deeper offensive team. Huberdeau having a Hart Trophy candidate season. And then Barkov, obviously one of the best two-way centers in the game. Sam Reinhart, an amazing year. And just other guys down the list I can think of. Claude Giroux coming in, really fit in like a glove there. Anthony Duclair, Carter Verhage, Sam Bennett. list goes on and on. And just looking at the matchup, it seems like it's going to be a very high-scoring series. Because I don't trust the goaltending of either of these teams. Sergey Bobrovsky hasn't had the worst year statistically, but still come playoff time, I don't trust him. And I didn't even trust him this season. He was very up and down, but he had, you know, the prolific offensive team in front of him to kind of carry for him. And uh, that's why he got a lot of wins. But yeah, I don't trust him in the playoffs. And he's proven in the past that, uh, you know, his play can definitely dip quite a bit. And then even more so for Washington, I don't even know who the starter is going to be for the Capitals. At least I would assume that Bobrovsky is going to be the starter for the Panthers in the playoffs but for the Capitals Vanacek Samsonov neither of them have had amazing years now Vanacek's had the better season so I would probably lean to starting him in game one but again I look in between the pipes and I just see too many question marks for the Capitals and combined with the fact that the the Panthers are just too good of an offensive team it's just really hard for me to wrap my head around the Capitals really having any chance in this series. With that, I am going to take the Florida Panthers to take this series in five games. So ultimately, the goaltending could decide this series considering how great both these teams are on the offensive end of things. But I look at Florida being the superior offensive team. That's kind of my logic to it. They're probably just going to be end up outscoring Washington in this series. And if Vanacek and Samsonov can't get you those saves on a consistent basis... Washington has no chance in this series. Next up, we have a huge matchup here on the books. We got the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning clashing in a series that's going to have a lot of headlines. Now, although the Tampa Bay Lightning are back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions looking for that three-peat, I definitely think the Toronto Maple Leafs can definitely um, offset a lot of the strengths that the Tampa Bay Lightning have. I mean, you look at the offensive numbers, both teams can score. In fact, Toronto averaged more goals per game. Toronto's power play was actually better, but Tampa obviously is can be very lethal on the power play in any moment in time. And looking at you know, the brosters and all the players that they have, the offense is going to be there. Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, John Tavares. And then on Tampa, you got Stamkos, Kucherov, and Braden Point, and Victor Hedman. Just an abundance of offensive depth 
on both of these teams. But the one big discrepancy between both these teams is the goals against. Tampa Bay, sixth in goals against, and the Leafs ranked 19th, which I believe is the lowest ranked of any playoff team currently. This was due in part to Jack Campbell having a miserable middle of the season. Just he could not stop a puck to save his life. Even down the stretch, Andre Vasilevsky looked more so human than we've ever seen the last couple of years. So, you know, there is a little bit of questions in between the pipes heading into this series. However, when it comes down to it, I mean, Andre Vasilevsky proved it to me in the past. He is still the best goalie in the league, in my opinion. And I think he'll be a tremendous, tremendous help for this Tampa Bay Lightning team and not allowing many goals. And although the Toronto Maple Leafs have very great offensive players, so do the Lightning. And I just think goaltending is to decide this series ultimately. And if I had to choose between Jack Campbell and Andre Vasilevsky, it's an easy pick for me. I'm taking Vasilevsky as being the ultimate difference maker in the series. So I'm taking the Tampa Bay Lightning to take it in six games. And I'm not saying that Jack Campbell isn't going to play well in this series. He very well could. I mean, last year even, even when the Toronto Maple Leafs entirely blew that series to the Montreal Canadiens, I mean, I was happy, obviously, but, you know, they still kind of blew that series. Jack Campbell had fantastic numbers. He was actually very good in that series. So, you know, I still think he could have a good series, but ultimately, when it comes down to who is going to come up with the big saves and who is probably, you know, going to be the bigger reason why they win, Andre Vasilevsky is just simply the guy for me. And I know there's a lot of people that think that oh, there's going to be some rust on Tampa Bay or their fatigue from winning those back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. And people just believe that the Leafs are finally going to get out of the first round. I'm sorry, but when you're facing a team that's as playoff tested and who has battled their way to two straight Stanley Cups, you don't get the benefit of the doubt from me. So for that reason, Tampa's going to win this series. They're just the better, deeper, more complete team, top to bottom. It's really nothing against Toronto. It's just this is a very difficult matchup for them, in my opinion. In the Metropolitan Division bracket, we got the Carolina Hurricanes, who won that division, going up against the Boston Bruins, who have the first wild card. Now, at first glance, you look at the season series, and Carolina absolutely mop the floor with the Boston Bruins taking all three meetings and I think like at least two of them they absolutely destroyed them in those matchups looking deeper into these like other stats this could turn out to be a more evenly matched series than people might actually anticipate initially like I see similarities between both teams especially of how they are structured defensively I mean both teams are capable of scoring goals averaging each over three a game obviously Carolina slightly better in the offensive metrics power play included but then you look at defense i mean carolina the best defensive team in the league but boston top five at being fourth in the league they can defend as well obviously we know that both these teams also have some very good offensive players sebastian aho andre svechnikov tavo teravina to name a few for carolina and then on boston of course we got the main three guys that we all know brad marchand david posternock and Patrice Bergeron and other guys who've had great years like Taylor Hall and Eric Halla, for example. Overall, I see two teams that are very similarly constructed, and I think both of them are very much so built for playoff hockey. So this was a very, very tough decision for me to make. Honestly, a toss-up. I know a lot of people are picking upsets in this series. Here's what my prediction is. So yes, I do believe that this series is going to go the distance, even though the Bruins are a wild card. I think they have the potential to make this a very long series. And I think a lot of people, I think most of the people actually are picking the Bruins to upset the Hurricanes because of the question marks in goal for Carolina with Frederick Anderson maybe not being healthy to start the series. But even with that, I still believe the Hurricanes are going to pull this one out and take it in seven games. Even with Frederick Anderson not being able to start the playoffs potentially, honestly, I think Antti Ranta could do just fine. I actually do kind of trust him. I think he could be a very solid um, goaltending presence for them. And the Carolina Hurricanes are low-key a team that can kind of pick up the goaltending when it's down. They just have a deep enough team offensively, and they're unquestionably the best defensive team in the league. I think they can offset any deficiencies that they might have in between the pipes. Even if you want to question the goaltending situation in Carolina, I wouldn't necessarily feel the uttermost of confidence in the Boston Bruins goaltending. Not that they've played poorly. I mean, both Linus Allmark and Jeremy Swayman have had solid seasons, 
But you consider the fact that neither of these guys have any playoff experience. And there's even the question of who's even going to start between these two. Like, I would probably lean more towards Allmark because overall, I think he's been the more consistent goalie. Although it looked like through the first half of the season, Jeremy Swayman was taking over that starter's role. But down the stretch, Allmark has definitely outplayed him. So I think he's earned back that starter's role come playoff time for them. But especially for young goaltenders, you just never know how they're going to play come playoff time. I mean, looking back last season, I think Tristan Jari was not the uh, starting goaltender until last season. It was really his first year with the Penguins as the clear-cut number one. And he really struggled. So you never know if Linus Allmark gets off to a bad start and Jeremy Swayman's no better. It could go ugly pretty quickly for Boston. Yeah, this is a very evenly matched series in my opinion. Even considering the Frederick Anderson injury, I really don't think there's that big of a discrepancy between both teams' goaltending situations. And I also have confidence anyway that Frederick Anderson could find his way back into the series at some point. And I just think the Hurricanes are just way too deep of a team I think they're a better defensive team in between the two. And on offense, although Boston has guys who can score goals, and actually, you know, they've shown that they can be a lot deeper. I think, you know, spreading David Pasternak down to the second line has really elevated Taylor Hall and a guy like Eric Halla. But ultimately, lines one through four, I don't know if there's a deeper team in the NHL than the Carolina Hurricanes in terms of the production they get from their top line all the way down to their fourth line. So for that reason, the Hurricanes get the edge for me. And that could be seen as a bit of an unpopular pick because of the goaltending situation, but I still trust the Hurricanes overall as a group, and I just, I don't want to overthink this. And to conclude these first round matchup previews, we got the New York Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins as the 2-3 matchup in the Metropolitan Division. But to be honest, I don't really know how to feel about this series because I look at the matchup and obviously the Rangers were the better of the two teams this season and they pretty much dominated uh, the regular season series between the two. But also the Pittsburgh Penguins, we know they have that experience. The Rangers under this core haven't been really to the Stanley Cup playoffs yet. And the Penguins, we know what they've done in the past. Now, in recent years, they haven't gotten out of the first round, but we still know they have the guys that can go far in the playoffs. Sidney Crosby, of Gany Malk and Chris Letang, Jake Gensel, they've all been there before. It's very interesting to see, you know, guys like Malk and Letang who are going to be free agents after next season. This could legitimately be the last run or the last dance of this Pittsburgh Penguins core. So there's a possibility that the Penguins kind of just go all in and uh, maybe, you know, shock us go on a very deep run. Even though the Rangers, you can argue they're more inexperienced, I can't discredit what I've seen this season, especially down the stretch. Now, what I mean by that is... Through like the first 60 games of the season, I was not entirely sold on the Rangers at all. Like Igor Shosturkin, I know what he could do. Obviously, he's having a Vesna-like season. He's probably going to win the Vesna, if we're being honest. But apart from that, like Igor Shosturkin really carried the Rangers to a lot of wins, especially in the early going. And even through like the first half of the season, it just seemed like the Rangers were get outplayed every single game and were a poor puck possession team and inconsistent five on five in terms of their offensive production that relied too heavily on their power play. But you know, after the trade deadline, when they acquired Andrew Kopp and Frank Vetrano, things really started to click. I really think the Rangers have played a lot better in front of Igor Shosturkin down the stretch. And I think that's exactly what they needed. And I think they're coming together at the right time. And, you know, Panarin's advantage at Kreider leading the charge. Those guys, I mean, they, you know, they put up their numbers and all that, but they've really stepped up more consistently and just the entire team as a whole seems to be clicking Andrew Kopp fits in like a glove on this Rangers team right now and combine that with the fact that Igor Shosturkin I mean he had a little bit of a bobble late but uh, really entering the final stretches there he really turned up his game to another level and, and returned to the godly start he had now I look at this Rangers team and I see a legitimate Stanley Cup contender and I really think they can go far in the playoffs. Looking at this Penguin series, I don't want to disrespect Pittsburgh and I know Pittsburgh even, you know, overall had the better offense, but uh, defensively, special teams, goaltending, everything else points to the Rangers' favor. So I think the Rangers are going to pull away with this series win. So with that, I have the New York Rangers taking it in five games. So I don't have it a particularly close series, although I think Pittsburgh is more experienced. And you know what? If they do pull off an upset, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be so shocking, you know, considering the guys they have. But 
when you look at playoff hockey, goaltending is very crucial. And although Tristan Jari had a good season, I don't know how, how he's going to look in the playoffs. He might not be the same, but I hope he's at least, you know, very solid. But, you know, a guy like Igor Shosturkin, I mean, like he's done for the majority of the season for the Rangers, he is the type of goalie to single-handedly steal you a series. Pretty sure he, like, shut them down a couple of times this year on his own. So I just really like the Rangers in this series. And I think they have the toughness. They have the grit to really, um, you know, kind of slow down the Penguins' skilled forwards. So, yeah. The Rangers are my pick in this series. All right, so now I'm going to finish the rest of my bracket with all these second round matchups and onward. And from here on out, I'm just not really going to go with all the statistics and use matchups as my logic to picking teams to win. I'm just going to go based off instinct who I feel could end up going further because at this point, you know, injuries and just, you know, depth could start, you know, coming into play in uh, how series turn out here. So I'm kind of just going to kind of wing it a little bit and uh, see where this takes me. So for the second round, firstly, I would have Colorado facing off against Minnesota. I like both teams. I think Colorado obviously is very elite offensively, but I think Minnesota can score too. I think defensively, they're both kind of the same. I mean, you could maybe skew more towards Colorado, but I definitely think Minnesota is an underrated defensive team and can defend. Both have great goaltending, Darcy Kemper versus either Flurry or Talbot. This is a very evenly matched series, but I'm just going to go out of the limb, throw out a hot take. I think Minnesota advances and takes out the Colorado Avalanche in the second round. I know the Avs are probably like the odds on favorite to win the Stanley Cup just based on they have the most talented roster in the NHL. But you know what? The Stanley Cup playoffs are a little crazy and it, life doesn't always work out that way where the favorites end up winning. And I just, I have a feeling that Minnesota is going to go deep in the playoffs. I really like their goaltending that they have two guys they can roll with. I don't know. I, I really don't have any other logic to explain this reasoning, but I just feel like Minnesota is capable of pulling off an upset here if you want to call it that because they're also a very good team. But yeah, I just think Minnesota is going to win. I'm going on a limb next off I would have the Flames taking on the Kings in the second round like I said with the Kings I like their defensive structure and I think they're able to um, you know kind of sort of expose the Oilers a little bit with their poorest of defenses and inconsistent goaltending even though Mike Smith played well but I don't really trust him as much as a Jonathan Quick let's say but anyway getting to the Flames I feel like the Flames can kind of beat the Kings at their own game because unlike the Oilers the Flames are just as if not a more and better and deeper structured defensive team compared to the Kings. And Jacob Markstrom just had a all-world season, led the league in shutouts. And even with those things, it kind of cancels out what the Kings' strengths are. And then obviously it comes down to offense and it's not even close. The Flames are far and away the superior offensive team. So I think the Flames would end up winning that series, and I'm going to say probably in five games. Yeah, and also, uh, I picked Minnesota over Colorado in seven. I think it goes the distance, but Colorado uh, falls in game seven, and Minnesota advances to the Western Conference Finals to take on the Calgary Flames. And moving on to the Eastern Conference bracket here, I got the Battle of Florida in the second round. This series was unbelievable last season, and it was a shame it was only in the first round. Um, but for me, I think history ends up repeating itself. Florida can score. So can Tampa. And then after that, I just think uh, the rest of Florida's weaknesses are going to kind of get exposed to the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are far and away the better defensive team, and they have the better goalie in Andre Vasilevsky. And you need good goaltending and consistent goaltending to win a Stanley Cup. And for me, Florida doesn't have that. You know, against Washington, I think they can get by because also Washington doesn't have very good goaltending, so it really would come down to who could score more goals, and I would bet on Florida there. But... With Tampa Bay, Vasilevsky's just on an all-world level. He's on another level, and I just don't think Florida can solve him as much. Well, maybe they could solve him a little bit better than most teams, but you take a look at the other side of the pipes there with Sergei Bobrovsky. I'm just not super confident in him uh, you know, shutting the door on Tampa Bay, who is probably just as deep of an offensive team in lines run one through four, so... I would go with Tampa Bay to return to, at the very least, an Eastern Conference Finals. On the other uh, side of the East bracket here, we got the Carolina Hurricanes taking on the New York Rangers. I think I kind of went back and forth on this one. I think this might be the 
potentially the toughest second round series for me to predict. And this is more kind of a feeling over logic where in my head, everything is telling me that the Carolina Hurricanes are the better team. They're more structured defensively. They're, I think they're more deeper, in my opinion, up front. But something in my gut is just telling me that the Rangers are going to find a way to win this series if it you know it if it ends up being these two in the second round so yeah i'm going with the rangers to take this series um probably in seven games i'll say i also think the tampa bay florida one also goes seven so i I have three of the four series in the second round going seven games yeah getting back to the rangers again it's that thing about goaltending now I know the Hurricanes goaltending, I think they might be able to get by Boston because I'm just not entirely sure how the Bruins goaltending is going to look. But with the Rangers, I know what I'm going to get from Igor Shosturkin. And again, goaltending can single-handedly steal you a series. Combined with the fact that the Rangers have a plethora of offensive weapons, I just think they're going to find a way to get this done. And they're going to go deep as well, and they'll be in the Eastern Conference Finals. Now I would have my Western Conference Finals being the Minnesota Wild against the Calgary Flames. I think at this point in the playoffs, I really think depth becomes more of an X factor in you know deciding who could win a series. For me, Minnesota, I think they're deeper in goal. Like Markstrom's obviously very good, but the, just the fact that Minnesota can rely on two goalies to get them through, especially maybe they can like flip-flop starts and they can be even fresher as the series go on. I think that's a huge weapon to have, especially deep in the playoffs if you want to make a deep playoff run. I know the Flames can score, but so can the Wild, and I would argue that the Wild lines one through four are the deeper offensive team. I think with Calgary, if you can slow down that top line of Johnny Gaudreau, Elias Lindholm, and Matthew Kachuk, I just don't know if Andrew Mangiapane can single-handedly like you know take the lead and carry that offense on his own. And Tyler Toffoli, I just don't think him as like a number one guy as a leader offensively either i just don't think there's enough there for the flames uh, if the top line doesn't get going whereas for minnesota say caprizov and zuccarello don't have great seasons you have other guys you have to contain other big bodies that are physical that can also score goals like joel erickson Eck. matt boldy might be an x factor you know kevin fiala obviously uh, Ryan Hartman, Marcus Foligno. Like, I just feel like there's more to contain on Minnesota's end. I just think they're a more deeper team. And, you know, Calgary, I could definitely see winning a Stanley Cup. But in my opinion, I think Minnesota is going to go to the Stanley Cup Finals. And I'll pick Minnesota in six. And then my Eastern Conference Finals right now is the Tampa Bay Lightning and the New York Rangers. Now, for me, my head once again thinks that Tampa Bay is the best team in the NHL. They've won back-to-back cups. They probably should be favored to win a third straight just because they're deep in all areas. They're deep up front. They're deep on the blue line. And Andre Vasilevsky, until proven otherwise, is still the best goaltender. But again, I think I'm going with my gut. Something tells me the Rangers are going to go to the Stanley Cup Finals and dethrone the Tampa Bay Lightning. And honestly, I think the Rangers don't even match up that bad. I think the Rangers are just as prolific offensively. They have their star players. Obviously, Igor Shosturkin is just an elite of a goaltender. And even the defense, I mean, maybe you could give the edge to the Lightning, but it's not like the Rangers don't have guys. They got big bodies. You know, Adam Fox is obviously a top five defenseman in the league. Jacob Truba can lay the body and produce offense. Keandre Miller, like there's some solid defensemen on that Rangers team. But I look at if fatigue maybe starts setting in, especially for the Tampa Bay Lightning, who in my opinion, I think have a little bit of a tougher route to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals. They have to get through wars through Toronto and then Florida. I think they could very much be gas. Whereas New York, I feel like getting through Pittsburgh and then potentially Carolina or Boston in my opinion, I think is a slightly easier path. So I think the advantage could go to the Rangers and the fact that they're probably, you know, healthier and more well-rested when it cut, gets to, you know, that point of the playoffs. So I'm going to say the Rangers take that in six games. And with that, I have a very interesting Stanley Cup finals, maybe a little bit different than what most people predict, but it's the Stanley Cup playoffs, you know, anything can happen. So I'm just going to roll with Minnesota versus the New York Rangers as my Stanley Cup Finals. Honestly, I, I've totally run out of any sort of logical explanation. I mean, you get to this point of the playoffs, it's really an anything can happen, just a pick me kind of thing. With that, I'm just gonna say it, the Minnesota Wild 
are going to take that series. And I believe that the Minnesota Wild are going to win the 2022 Stanley Cup. I mean, I think both the Rangers and the Wild are good enough to get to the finals. So at this point, I really don't have anything to say as why I think the Wild can beat the Rangers. It really just me flipping a coin be like, you know what? I think Minnesota has what it takes to go very deep. And I've just been eyeing them for a while. I just think they have a very deep group offensively. You know, lines one through four can score. I think they're a very solid defensive team, even though they might not have any like elite of elite defensemen on their team per se. And then just the goaltending factor. When you have two great goaltenders and Cam Talbot and Mark andre Fleury, who down the stretch have been playing their best hockey this season, getting hot at the right time is very important to, you know, going on a deep playoff run, and especially when you have two guys, like I said before, that you can kind of flip flop and swap game in and game out and just rest both of them and have full confidence in both of them, I think it's going to work wonders for this wild team. And I just think they have what it takes. One thing that probably concerns me about this pick is their center depth. Although I don't think they have like the worst centers in the league. Obviously on their team, I don't think there's a guy there that I see as like a legitimate, like number one franchise centerman on that group. But I really think the wild just get it done by committee. And even down the middle, when you have Ryan Hartman having years that he's having, Joel Erickson neck is, one of the better defensive centers in the league. And you have guys like Frederick Goudreau who are having career years on the second line playing with Fiala and Boldy. Like, I just think the Wild have what it takes to win. They have a complete roster of gritty, physical, responsible two-way players that can defend very well and will get very high quality goaltending in these playoffs. But obviously this is a huge risk pick in the Wild because I can very much see them even losing in the first round to the Blues who are an amazing team but anyway yeah that's gonna wrap up this video of my stanley cup playoff predictions of this nhl 2022 season let me know what you guys think in the comments section if you agree or disagree again be respectful anything can happen in the stanley cup playoffs so just tell me your predictions and uh leave them down in the comments maybe people won't take this video too seriously because in the later rounds i'm not really using logic but even even when the playoffs start, you kind of have to take those statistics in the regular season and throw them out the window. It's a totally different game. The playoffs are simply a different beast. Anything can happen. You kind of just have to look at and see if you can trust teams goaltending and teams depth. That's ultimately what gets you a Stanley Cup championship. I think this video was long enough, but I hope you guys enjoyed my analysis of every single first round series and then kind of, you know, giving my thoughts on where I think uh, teams can go from there. So yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.